Hey, what's up, YouTube? Brian Fajoli here, uh, once again with an unboxing. Um, hello to all my YouTube viewers and my betanews.com readers, my favorite people in the world. Today in unboxing, uh, something really cool. Now, uh, earlier, or I should say, um, late last year, I did an unboxing of Netgear's um, six antenna uh, router. Uh, the Nighthawk, which I believe was the X6, if I'm not mistaken. That review is coming very soon, um, but I also got another router um, from Netgear that I'm actually more excited about than the X6. So let me let me show you what it is. This is the Nighthawk X4 AC2350 router. It's a smart Wi-Fi router. Now, this particular router, you know, has less antennas, and in theory, it might even be um, slower than the, the six antenna monster router that Netgear sells. Um, but this has a particular um, feature that I like a lot better that is not featured on the, um, the X6, the Nighthawk X6. So first, let's, let's go ahead and do uh, an unboxing of this. So just from looking at the front, let's see, it has a 1.4 gigahertz dual core processor. And it is network storage ready. It has twin USB 3.0 ports and an eSATA. Um, USB 3.0 is great. eSATA is cool too, um, but that's that's kind of a dead standard. E, e, you know, eSATA. Um, not many people really use it anymore, just because it's not a um, it's not a powered port. It's kind of a, you know you have if you have an a, an eSATA drive, you have to you know have a separate power source. So it never really took off. Um, you know, if you were going to be setting that up, it, it just it just wasn't worth the hassle. Um, but I like, I really like that it has twin USB 3.0, and it's cool that it has the SATA port in the back. You know, I would never use it. Most people probably never will use it, but it's cool nonetheless. So let's take a look at the box here. So, system requirements: Windows 7, 8 Vista XP 2000, Mac OS. And here's the cool part, Unix or Linux. Now, of course, it's a router. It's going to work with Linux. I mean, of course, it's... it's. Um, but the cool thing is, the really cool thing I like about it is that it lists Linux. It, it's giving respect to Linux. A lot of manufacturers don't even bother putting it on the box. Um, even though it's, you know, their product is compatible with Linux, they don't even bother putting it uh, on there. And I just think that's kind of cheesy. I like that Netgear lists uh, Linux and Unix uh, support, which is cool. So what does this have? So security features, customized free URL to set up a personal FTP server. And I don't need that, but it's cool. Guest network access. That I like because sometimes we have people over the house that I don't necessarily want to give access to the full network or give out my um, my password for my, um, for my Wi-Fi so I can set up a kind of a separate guest network access. Um, let's see, double firewall protection and uh, DOS prevention, attack prevention. That's cool. You can use the Netgear Genie app, which is a personal dashboard to monitor, control, and repair your home network. Um, makes any printer air print compatible. Hmm. Now that's cool because my current printer, I have an HP printer that is not air print compatible. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Uh, my media, eh, probably wouldn't use that. Um, Turbo transfer. Share files within your home network between blah, blah, blah. For PC, Mac, iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Cool. They've had over 3 million downloads of the app. And it is available on Google Play and the App Store. And they have 24-7 tech support. Uh, and the phone support is free for 90 days. That's cool. A lot of people have trouble setting up routers. Uh, if you're, if, you know, if you've done it before, it's not a big deal. But uh, if you're a newbie, uh, having 90 days to have someone help you set up your router is pretty cool. Uh, so it's good for gaming, for streaming, for mobile, and for storage. Uh, very cool. Uh, cool. Okay. So let's see. The box is a little dinged up already. Uh, and unfortunately, looks like I don't. Again, I don't need my knife. Um, there's no sticker on it, and the box is already starting to open a little bit. So let's just open it up. Let's let's get started here. Let's see. So inside the box is yet another box. So let's see. let's pull this out. I'm really excited about this particular router. Inside the box is empty. Oh no! 
the little Android guy fell over there. There he is. So let's see. We have a, a, a plain Jane box. Let's see. I think I'll put it like this. It's just a brown box. Okay. Let's go ahead and pop that open. Okay. So let's see what we have inside. We have an installation guide. The AC2350 Smart Wi-Fi Router. And I really like the design. It looks nice. Um, it's futuristic like the X6 looks, but not. it's not as crazy looking. Uh, and I'll get to that more in a little bit. Uh, take the router out of the box. We'll look at that last. Let's see what else they give us here. We have an Ethernet cable. Pretty nice. Nice quality cable here. Let's see. We have the power brick, which is a pretty, pretty big brick. Oh, let me open this up for you so you can see. It's a big brick, but it's 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 nicely designed in such a way that um, this shouldn't take up too much room, depending on your outlet. The way that it's designed, it, it should fit well in my system. Um, in the surge protector and the power strip, because of the way it's designed, it's, it's it's a thin brick. It's a very smart design of this power brick. So you know, a lot of people will not give a second thought to the power brick. You should. I mean, it's it's a big part of it. Um, this is this is nice. This is a this is a smart design by Netgear. Now, this is the part that I'm excited about. So let me take that out of the box. Let me take what's left in the box out. Uh, as you can see inside the box is empty. So we're going to just throw the innards out, uh, box we're going to throw out, and we're going to undo the router here. I'm going to take it out of the bag, and I'm going to stick it right there. Okay, so there we have the actual router. Let me move my little, uh, my Mozilla 25th, or is it 15th, uh, yeah, not that old, 15th anniversary Mozilla my Android guy, and my Darth Vader clock. I'll move that out of the way, and we'll move the Netgear router right there. Okay, so I'm gonna peel up this plastic. I know a lot of people like this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna show you here now, I took this off, but it actually shows you my favorite part of this. You see where it says connect antenna 1 here, connect antenna 1 here, connect antenna 2 here, and 3 here. This is what I like about this router, is that the antennas are removable and replaceable. On Netgear's X6, they are not. They are there. And if you were to snap one off by mistake, you can't replace it. Um, if you wanted to replace it with better antennas or bigger antennas on the X6 you can't. On here, the kind of lesser router, I hate to call it a lesser router, the AC2350 Nighthawk X4, um, It's in my opinion, this is the preferable router because you can replace the antennas. Uh, notice also, I'm showing you here, it says your preset wireless settings. I like this nowadays. Um, it gives you a unique password uh, network key. So in this case, it's a Perfect Shoe 293. Even though, it should be a unique uh, network key. You should still set up a new one. Do not, you know, don't leave it as Perfect Shoe 293. Uh, that's the only reason I'm showing it on the video is because when I set this up in my home, I'm not going to put uh, Perfect Shoe 293 as the password. So, all right, let's take a look at this router. So on the side here, we have the eSATA, E-S-A-T-A. -A. Get that to zoom there. There you go. So the eSATA connection there if you wanted to hook up a um, hard drive, a uh, you know external hard drive. And again, the eSATA port, it's nice to have, but I don't want something sticking out the side of my... Um, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want anything sticking out the side of my router. So let's see. Okay. All right, let's look at the back. So on the back, now this is another feature I really like about Netgear routers, is I put my router in my living room. It's, you know, my cable modem is in the living room next to the TV, and I put the router there. It's on, it's, it's, it's in a good spot for the whole house. 
Um, LEDs are ugly in a living room. If you're watching TV, it can distract. I like that it's on, but I can turn it off if I don't want LEDs blinking in my face, which is a much better choice than putting black electrical tape over the lights, which can look a little bit cheesy, right? Right, exactly. So let's take a look. So on the back here, we have um, your hardwire connections. We have, uh, of course, the standard four uh, hardwired uh, gigabit uh, ports. We have the internet port that would go into your cable modem or other such um, internet source. Uh, we have a power connector and you can turn this on or off on being all the way in. Very cool. I like this a lot. So let's see. Now, I think it's interesting that, oh, let's look, let's look at the bottom too. There we go. There you go. Cool. So what I think is kind of, which is, which is interesting. I'm not sure why this is. Let's see. If it says antenna, where was that? It says connect antenna one on the back and then two and three. Um, so one, one, two, three, which means that they are different types of antennas. And I'm not sure why they're not all the same exact antenna, but I am sure I will learn that shortly. So here are the two antenna ones. Now they're all numbered, which is cool, so you can't get confused. Here's antenna two. Okay. And here's antenna three. Now the connections are all the same. Uh, okay, I can see what the difference is. Okay, so the difference really is the way in which they bend. So uh, let's see. It's hard to see it on this camera, but this is antenna two. So anten antenna two is going to bend like that. Um, I've, you know, so that it, it's basically going to bend the way that it connects. So this is two. Um, it would probably go over here, or over there. Um, antenna number three and antenna number one. So these are just the antenna ones, um, one and one, are bent in such a way that they would connect in the back. See, the, the bend on the bottom is different, the way it faces compared to the antennas. Uh, three and two, um, you know, I'll be honest, I don't think it matters what which way you put them on. Um, you could probably mix them up. One bends one way. It, you know, I don't think it would make much of a difference, but you could connect it like so. Let me go ahead and connect one of these bad boys here. Now, the way I would do it, I would recommend screwing this on like this first. Now, you don't want to turn too much with there. See, it stops, and then let's give it a little bit more of a pull. Uh, bam! And that's how the antenna goes on. So let's let's just go ahead and do that with all the antennas. Again, rather than go nuts, just screw it on first like so. And if you pay attention there, let's see, you can see at what point the, re the, um, the resistance gets so much that it stops turning. See now? Uh, and now I'm gonna twist it on a little bit tighter because again, we want to get it on fairly tight but not so much. Oh, you see, and I already made a mistake by not paying attention myself. So again, this is antenna one. See, I confused myself already. Let's see, so which is antenna? Antenna three, there we go. So antenna three is gonna go right here. And this is what I really like. Now I'm sure these antennas are really good um, but what happens if, I don't know, someone comes over and accidentally breaks one? Um, you know, I like the fact that I can then just go ahead and replace them. You know, it's, 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 it's a much better um, thing to have replaceable antennas. And I'm, the X6 is actually a great router. I haven't had a chance to review it yet. We, you know, we, I wanted to do a comparison between this, uh, the X4 and the X6. So I haven't had an opportunity yet to review the X6, but I'm going to kind of review these together. They're very similar. Um, come on. There we go. They're very similar, just that, you know, this one has the um, four antennas, but they're replaceable. And you know what? I got to be honest. Might be appropriate for Darth Vader to stand there. I like the look of the X4 more than the X6 as well. These are bigger antennas, um, and the six the six kind of looks like a bug. There's like you know it's it comes out like a bug. This looks more professional, and you know like I said I haven't reviewed the X6 yet, but I will say this: 
the six antennas, so there's like three, you know, it comes off the sides. I found difficulty positioning that particular router in my living room because by my TV, there was kind of no way to position it because the antennas were getting in the way. Here, the antennas are all pushed towards, the, like more towards the back. So if I wanted to hide this behind my TV and have this maybe peek out the bottom of the TV, I can do that up to here. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's a matter of what technology is having it match your needs, but also fitting into your home. And a router is a very personal home product. Um, so you want that to kind of blend into your home. You don't want, you know, imagine, you know, imagine you go to like a really fancy, you know, restaurant and right in the middle of the beautiful display of the food and the ice sculptures and all this fancy stuff, you have, you know, you need Wi-Fi in the restaurant, let's say, and in the middle you have this router sticking there. And you're going to go, wow, that's kind of in the way. There's blinking lights, there's antennas hanging off. You want it to blend in. Your router should not really, you shouldn't be paying attention to the router. It should be blending in to the background, to the scenery, let's say. And the X6 um, is a great router if you're not putting it in your living room, uh, but it's a pretty futuristic, weird-looking thing that I've had people come into my house while I've had that router hooked up, and they say, what is that thing over there? It's weird-looking, and I don't necessarily want that from my router. You know, maybe if I have a nice sculpture, I want that talk about, oh, that's a, uh, that's a nice sculpture or something. Um, but I don't necessarily want to get into a discussion about, oh, that's my six antenna router that blah, blah, blah. And again, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. The X6 is an amazing router. Um, it's one of the best you can buy. And, and um, you know, you can even put different firmwares. It's, it's, it's like a, a really great, um, a really great router. But I, I, you know, and again, I haven't even tested this yet. I just unboxed this. But features alone, um, I like the fact that it has the four detachable antennas. I like the USB 3.0. I would prefer, I, I will say this, just, just, you know, look, just from sight, I would prefer the USB, uh, USB 3.0 ports were in the rear. Um, because now I'm going to have something hanging off the side that then routes maybe to the back. Um it's not the worst thing in the world, but I would prefer that those USB ports were in the back. Some people might actually prefer it on the side because let's say you have it like this on your shelf. You don't want to have to reach around the back to um, hook something up or disconnect something. Um, it's cool that you have it you know, on the side. You can more easily just get in there, put a flash drive in there or something if you wanted to share something on your network. Um, or maybe someone comes over to your house and they have, like, a, like I said, they have a flash drive full of pictures. You can put it in, hook it up to your network. Trans you know, there's, there's some options there. Um, but for me, if I'm hooking up a hard drive to my network, I'm going to want it to be um, there for a long time. Uh, so I would probably prefer to have those ports in the back. So, again, this is a long unboxing. It looks like it's coming up towards, like, 20 minutes. And, you know, with my unboxings, they're not just an unboxing. It's also a preview. So I do want to say that as well. Um, so kind of giving a preview, talking about the features, doing the unboxing. Um, but it's not just strictly an unboxing. Any, any, anybody can just open up a box and say, here's this, here's that. And there's a place for that. But uh, I like, kind of like to discuss these, do more of a preview as well. So we will be reviewing this for betanews.com. Uh you know, again, thank you so much for watching my videos. Uh, thank you so much for reading betanews.com. It's one of the best tech sites in the world. Um, very long history, and we love our readers. Um, so, you know, everybody, uh, you know, please visit betanews.com. Subscribe to my videos if you like them. Uh, I hope that you do, but if you don't, that's cool too. Uh, and again, thank you for watching. Brian Fajoli, betanews.com. Woo!